بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين جل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهر وأكرمني بنور الفهر اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا قزاء نعلومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم uh, الحمد لله we have to feel to have this session from Kenya and today الحمد لله we came to Mariapolis Center which is about one hour away from Nairobi and we had very good الحمد لله program Yesterday, Tangaza University, thanks for your du'as. And inshallah, you will see the link for the lecture yesterday, which with Allah's help and your du'as, alhamdulillah, was uh, very well received, alhamdulillah. Uh, tonight, we continue our study of 40 hadith, and the chapter for tonight is about definition of ikhlas. Because there are many different levels of sincerity and different dimensions. It can be fiqhi, it can be akhlaqi, you know, jurisprudential, ethical, erfani, mystical. So there are different definitions given by Muslim scholars, and some of them actually. Uh, introduce to us aspects of ikhlas that might be uh, very, you know, kind of difficult to achieve. So let's uh, start with the first definition that Imam Khomeini mentions here, which is from Khaja Abdullah Ansari, the author of Manazil al-Sa'irin the stations of wayfarers. So he has a chapter on ikhlas and there he has this definition. Al-ikhlasu tasfiyatul amal min kull shawb. Ikhlas, which here means sincerity, purity of intention, is to purify the action from any show, any mixture, anything that would be combined, would be mixed with the action. What does it mean? It means that you do what you are doing without seeking pleasure of yourself or any other creature is only for the sake of God you don't want to please anyone you don't want even to please yourself it's not that you want to you know meet some of your desires for reward or I don't know protection or you want to get something from this above. So as you see, the way he introduces ikhlas is more than what is required in fiqh. In fiqh, what is important is that you do something for the sake of nearness to God, and in order to have this qastul qurba al Allah, it's enough that you want to uh, not you don't want to please anyone outside of your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if you want to for example gain something for yourself something like reward or to save yourself from difficulties of this world or the hereafter that may not conflict with Qastul Qurba. But in Irfani approach, 
for the people who reach the station of ikhlas, not something that everyone from the beginning should have, you even don't think and consider and seek your own pleasure, let alone pleasure of other creatures. The late Sheikh Baha'i has also a definition. It is attributed to Sheikh Baha'i that he says, according to Ashabul Qulub, the people of the heart, means the people who are really spiritual and taking care of subtleties of heart. They say ikhlas is tanzeehul amal and yakuna li qayrullah fihi naseebun. Very similar to what Khaja Abdullah has. To purify the action from the possibility of anything or anyone other than God having a share in your action. Allah means anything other than God, which includes yourself, should not have any share in your action, solely and purely, entirely, for the sake of God. And then he says there is also this definition. Again, this is Sheikh Baha'i mentioning this. Sheikh Baha'i in his Arba'in, which has, you know, he has also 40 hadiths, he says, there is another definition, Baqila, it has been said, Ikhlas is, Allah yurid a'amiluhu alayhi evavan fiddarain. Sincerity of intention means that the agent the doer of the action does not want, does not seek any return in this world or the hereafter. Only for the sake of God. I don't want to get something in dunya. I don't want, for example, to pray in order to get uh, I don't know, good reputation, or get good job, or get, you know, good family, or you know, good rest, or even, I don't know, good friends, or anything in the hereafter. No. It's still, you have not reached the level of ikhlas, if you are seeking something worldly, or something the hereafter, by doing this action. Again, as I said, this is a high station, and it's not something that, if you don't have it, uh, then all your actions are void or you know, it's useless. No. The bottom line is you don't do it to please someone else. Even if you want to get something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your dunya, from the fiqh point of view is fine, still Allah would accept it, still you would get benefit from this spiritually, but little by little you have to uh, raise your intention to the level that nothing other than Allah, at least in your ibad, can attract you. Because if they attract you, then they divert your attention away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us at least in our ibadah be focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I sometimes you know, use this example, I say, you know, if you see your child, your small brother or sister, your, I don't know, your student, whatever, if comes and talks to you, and keeps praising you, but all the time is looking at your pocket or looking at your hand, and you want to, you know, just 
uh, he wants just to get something from you, you feel very, you know, heartbroken. This person is praising me, but uh, he's only trying to get something from me. If he really is praising me, why he is not happy to be with me? What he is not enjoying this encounter that he has for me? So, we should raise our level of attention at least in our ibadah so that inshallah little by then the whole life uh, we would be more focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then there is another definition which says that of course Imam Khoi says is quoted from uh, the book Gara Ibn Bayan I didn't have that much time to search for it and I in the little time that I had I didn't uh, find the original uh, text but the translation that we have is that it says or maybe original is also Farsi because it's not a very well known book and he Imam Khomeini also quotes indirectly There's, it is cited is quoted from this book that Mukhlesan آنها هستند که عبادات خدا کنند به طوری که نبینند خود را در عبودیت او و نه عالم و اهل آن را The people who are sincere are those who worship God without seeing themselves worshiping them. So they don't see their own worship and they don't see the people of the world and the whole world. They are so much attracted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much overwhelmed by the beauty of encounter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they don't think about themselves and what they are doing. You know, if suppose the person that you have been for years trying to meet if you meet that person all of a sudden then you may forget yourself you know what dress I have on you know or for example what appointment I have for example uh, am I thirsty am I hungry you forget everything even you forget that you are now able to meet him you are just focusing on that person very naturally not that you decide to do this the power of love uh, naturally brings concentration and focus so mukhlisin are the people that when they do ibadah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they even forget themselves being in the condition of ibadah Then we have something from Ibn Arabi, Muhyiddin Arabi, commenting on the ayah Ala Lillah al-Dinul Khalis in Surah Zumar, verse three. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Allah be aware that to Allah belongs the pure religion what is this pure religion according to Ibn Arabi he says Allah lillah al-deen al-khalis an shawbil to Allah belongs the religion, the faith, which it seems to me means here religiosity, because deen can mean religion, which is something which is there, whether you are there or not, religion is there. 
and there are other people who follow it. But religion in the sense of your religiosity, your tadayyum, because many times din is used in this sense, means your iman, your faith, your religion. So, ad al khalis means pure religiosity, pure faith, is the one which is pure with respect to qayriya wal amaniya. Anything other than God and anything egoistic should be not there. So not to involve others and not even to involve your ego. It would be only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he continues, because when in your journey you reach the point that you lose yourself in God, which is of course the best way of gaining yourself. It's very good to lose yourself in God. So, if you lose your lower self in God, and then that's when your godly self will come. In this station of fana, what happens is you would have no longer essence of your own, sefa, attribute of your own, action of your own, wala din. Even in that condition, you have no din. Because you are not there so that you have something like din. You are no longer an issue. I don't want to say you don't exist, because I don't think fana means that you don't exist anymore. In my understanding, fana is you don't matter anymore to yourself. You don't see yourself as an issue. You may see yourself as a reflection of God, as a manifestation of God, but you don't see yourself in any way separate from God. So, when you reach that point, then you are pure and sincere. Wa illa lama khalusaddin bil haqiqah. Otherwise, if you don't reach this point, din, religiosity, iman has not really become pure. Fala yakun lillah. And if it is not pure, it is not for the sake of Allah. Because Allah says, Lillah dinul khalis. Of course, I as a talab, as a student, would again say, this doesn't mean that if you don't reach this point, it's useless. I think we have to be very careful when we interpret these verses in a mystical way. We don't give the impression to the people who are not reaching that level that everything else then is useless. No, I think sincerity has levels and degrees and you have to make sure that you have the minimum, the bottom line and then build upon it. It's not that either you have what Ibn Arabi says or you have nothing because only that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only that is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think this is what they must have meant also. Imam Khomeini when he explains, he says, if there is any matter of others or ego being there, this is shirk according to those who have deep ma'rafa, those who have mystical understanding, this would be polytheism, this would be shirk to involve others or yourself. And then he says, the worship of the sincere people is manifestation 
of their beloved. So it's like a map, it's like an image in which their beloved appears to them. And in their heart, there is no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that condition, the horizon of contingency is connected to the necessary being and necessity of existence. Because we are contingent being, Allah is what you do, we are mumkin of do. When you purify yourself from anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you are just getting to the horizon where after that it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are not very far from that meeting point and that connection point between the world of contingency and the world of necessary being. And what we have in the Quran, Kana Kaba Kausaina O Adna or Dana Fatadella Fatana Kaba Kausaina O Adna. This to know and Tadelli, this getting very close happens at that time. And in that condition, your Ibada and servitude is not through thinking. It's not the raviya. It shouldn't be royal. It's not with raviya. It's not with thinking. Rather, it is with tajalli. So instead of you being in need of being in your mind focused on Allah subhanahu wa taala, you reach the point that you would do ibadah with tajalli. Then Allah would be manifest for you. You have gone beyond. The realm of the concepts, the realm of ilm husuli, conceptual knowledge, and you are able to be in a world which has no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no distraction. When there are distractions, we need to use thinking and contemplation to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if there is no distraction, if there are no other things to keep us busy with themselves, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very obvious. So you have to aim at these high levels of sincerity. Okay, alhamdulillah, we finished this chapter. Then inshallah, what we have to do in the next session is to talk about the need for keeping sincerity after we finish the action. So it's not just that when you perform something you have sincerity of intention, you should try to keep it also afterwards. Of course, there are different legal implications here. Uh, in some cases, maybe if the intention after doing action is changed, it may not make the action void, Although if it was during the action, it would make it void. But from a spiritual point of view, uh, you must always keep your action sincere. It's not just enough that when, for example, suppose I do something sincerely, then later I try to show up. This would damage my spirituality. Inshallah, this is the topic that we will talk about it uh, in the next session if we have to. Be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to understand and then experience uh, these beautiful uh, degrees and levels of sincerity and may Allah inshallah before we die and before we are present before him on the day of judgment even when we are in dunya help us to experience this maximum encounter with him alhamdulillah rabbil alam